there are a lot of great movies that have been coming out over the past few weeks. You got like Dune, uh, Last Night in Soho, uh, uh, No Way to Die, uh, Venom. It's like there's so many great movies I could go see. But instead, uh, I went. It's actually Venom too. <laughs> <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. Joey. <laughs> but instead, I decided to go see the new My Hero Academia movie twice. Why? <laughs> because my priorities are shot. So screw it. I'm gonna let <laughs> do, do co- free content. Fucking anime. Let's do it. We're here. We're we're here again <laughs> to do more My Hero Academia talk. Uh, it's the usual crew. Me, Stefan. Got Ryan and Jack both here again. Hello. Hey. And th- I threw in a couple other people to join us. Uh, we got returning again, uh, Spider Knife. Hello. We got uh, Joey here, because why not? Hey, guys. <laughs> and uh, Jack and Joey's friend, uh, a new guy, uh, is here. Uh, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm new here. <laughs> hey, we have more people in this call than there are characters in the movie. Whoa. <laughs> and not Ke- and, and not not that Kevin, the other Kevin. The, the other Kevin you don't know about. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> we talk about the new My Hero Academia movie, World Heroes Mission, the third one, and be right just uh, before uh, we, we, we'll we'll start this off with each of us going through like a very just 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 a very brief kind of just overall like of just brief feelings over like just initial thoughts, uh, and then and then after we go through everybody, then we'll jump into just. What, we'll just go crazy with just a what, whatever little points and discussions we have because th- this isn't really like a movie of being like oh like what does this mean and what does that mean it's just kind of like oh it's a movie and how about how about we chat about because I honestly like just just to start this off I was ex- I wasn't really expecting too much I was just like oh it's it's another movie and it's gonna happen it's it's gonna there's gonna be stuff in it and honestly I was kind of surprised in like I was genuinely surprised of where this movie ended up going of just like oh there in a lot of ways it did exactly what I thought it was going to do but also did a lot of things I was not expecting to do and I think just like in in comparison to the other two movies it kind of stands in a way where like in in on, on the side that I believe that a most uh anime to film movies probably should go in that it does a lot to basically stand stand on its own and just kind of primarily tell its own story and i think in a lot of ways that even though there may be some things about like say the first two movies that we'll get into that i like more overall in terms of like mha as a, as a movie and as a story i'd say this is probably the best of the three and it's one that i think is like it, it's what it feels like they finally like they got their footing of like what they want to do and it's like it gives itself its own its own special identity while still just kind of doing the usual that you'd expect in a movie like this and again to more of like th- more detail of like how what i feel like later on but uh Ryan, you're just we'll start with you. Just just a general, uh, just general thoughts first, just to start off. I'm gonna say I was gonna pipe in and say I have the complete opposite problem. I think this is a massive step back in almost every way. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> As someone who's been to a lot of anime movies and been and is you know I'm old enough to remember when you know Dragon Ball Z got all their movies and all that, but from like Toonami and all that, this is the very definition of a boring filler do nothing movie. No one matters. Nothing really happens. Roddy is an interesting character, and we'll get to him later, but on its own, it's just kind of there. And as part of the bigger MHA world, it offers nothing of real substance. It's just a movie that's here to make money, and that's fine, I guess, but no, it's, it's a massive step back from basically everything the first two movies did. Basically, no one here matters besides Deku. So it's like, why have everyone and so many characters on, like, the posters and the marketing and all that? So it's just, no, this didn't need to exist. All right, be, be, before we get into to all, and I'll tell the heated debates, yeah, let, let, let's, <laughs> yes. just, let's go to Ed with everybody else. So, so Jack, uh, how yeah, yeah. You, Jack, how you feel? Uh, I'm on the exact opposite side of the... Um, <laughs> uh, terms Which of, one? like, everything. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I didn't watch any trailers i went in with no expectations and i came out really pleasantly surprised it was i feel like it was a very well done uh focused character movie uh between deku and roadie which is very it was a very far cry from the second movie which that one was just oh man here's fucking class 1a uh but here it's mostly just deku and roadie which i appreciate um but yeah i enjoyed it quite a lot i felt like as a movie it did a good job of giving him a character arc 
uh, having an interesting climax. Uh, I like the villain. I thought his power was kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, I, I probably this is probably my favorite uh, My Hero Academia movie of all three of them. <laughs> uh, Spider. So for me, um, I I too never watched really any of the trailers, and following from the second film, I'm I'm possibly in the minority with it. The the ending of the second film kind of was something I didn't agree with, just with how it how it went to be as a spectacle. It was incredible, and they executed that wonderfully. But as a how they how that was done, it just it was very it was just distracting for me, unfortunately. So I kind of went into this being like, okay, there's a third one. I'll probably watch it. But it was out of the previous two was the one I had the least anticipation. And whether that was to my benefit or not, after I ended up seeing it, I found myself pleasantly really enjoying it. It's probably my second favorite. I have a soft spot for the first film. But um, a lot of the highs that I enjoyed so like Rhodey also I quite was I was quite fond of him um and uh and I liked how you kind of like how what was like shown in the promotional stuff like the art that like oh it looks like it's going to be like this whole like stealth mission thing and it does something else granted you could it could be a it could work both ways. It could be a, a swerve that is like, oh, I was expecting this, but they gave me that. Yeah, I'll, get, oh, I'll get into the stealth stuff. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. That but, is. yeah, uh, <laughs> I apologize for taking a step ahead. But for me, it was kind of like, again, a pleasant surprise. I was like, okay, it's going this way, and I kind of like it. All I'm and, hearing it, is I should just leave now. <laughs> <laughs> Exit stage left. I tricked, yeah. <laughs> I tricked you. You're, you're, you're all cornered. You're cornered now. <laughs> you're being bamboozled. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so... Um, yeah, no, I, I came out of it enjoying quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, Joey? Alright. Um, I My thoughts are going to be all over the place, but uh, it's like... I like, I... like, I really actually... Ended, like the other... Like Stefan and uh, Spider, I didn't actually know what to expect from this one, because I thought that... After the first two, I wasn't sure what else they were going to do, and as soon as the first ten minutes started, I was like, Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah bait and switch. like i'd say in terms of like in terms of how much i enjoy them i i enjoy all three movies for the record but like mm. um this one had like it didn't have as many highs as the second one but also it didn't have as many lows as the second one either i eat i eat yeah, the ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the first one the first one was sort of there but like i still really enjoy the ending of that one a lot and the third one yeah it's like there was a, like a really lot of fun character moments with deku roadie i'm bummed that the rest of the class didn't really ha have too much just too much to do but like why are they all on the poster if they're not there for anything uh, we'll get into because that marketing, marketing. Yeah. yeah yeah but like and like, i really didn't i really did enjoy roadie as like a as a movie exclusive character he's probably my favorite out of the bunch they introduced and yeah, it's like I'm not sure whether or not I actually enjoy like which one I'd actually rank the two or three uh, as higher. But like honestly, the uh, all the movies are worth watching, so it's like that point is mood. I know that's a cop out, but uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> and lastly, Kevin. Yeah, so I also went into it completely blind, uh, and yeah, I was kind of expecting from the name that everybody was going to be involved, and was a little disappointed that everybody else kind of got sidelined uh i really enjoyed roadie as a side character he was well developed he was not annoying he was fun to see on the screen and everything uh the fight scenes were fantastic for the most part i'll get into that later <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah overall i thoroughly enjoyed it uh was a little slow kind of towards the beginning middle and then it really picked up at the end but yeah, I'm not sure how I would rank it either. Kind of going along with Joey, all three are enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Ha ha, cop out. What do you mean mine's a cop out too? <laughs> I'm copping out on your cop out. <laughs> I'm seeing double four cop outs. Four cop outs. 
<laughs> so just to start this off, uh, I'll, I'll start it off just by talking just kind of like a general like comparison of how, like just like what, how, what I what I feel works about this movie in comparison to the other two is that what I like is that all three of them kind of have like a very distinct identity towards them in mm -hmm. both positive and like negative ways. Like, like, like with the first movie, it's kind of been said by a lot of people that's pretty much just an extended episode of the anime. Like up until the ending, the animation is just it's okay it's like it's a very kind of like it's a simple it's a very simple story that they have and it's like oh it's just we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna take basically the, the the half of class a that matters and, ha and basically throw them into kind of a mini version of the raid and just go climb this go climb this tower and mm -hmm. it's just like oh it's just a fun it's just an excuse to have the characters just do fun action things and it's like it's nothing really deep mm -hmm. and then you get like a cool ending uh, to top it off Heroes Rising tries to do like some it tries to go like a lot bigger. It's like, oh, it's like this is a movie that like chronologically chron chronologically takes place at the same time as the manga, so it's trying to be like in a big important story. It's like borrowing all these like elements from the main manga. It's like trying to do, trying to have all of class 1A together as like oh, it, it's all about like them and like giving everybody like their moment to shine and it's like it, it's been kind of said how it's like in a lot of ways they do a lot of really good good jobs of like giving like giving those characters moments to do stuff while at the same time it's also like oh it's like it's slightly bloated because they're trying to give everybody too much so they don't get to do as much as they should and then the end like, even though i'm a defender of the ending the ending it just gets so batshit crazy <laughs> that it's like yeah you can understand why people are like uh, that, 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 that's that's going too far uh jump in that shark but with here, it's like, because yeah, on the on the surface, on the marketing, it's like, oh, this like they're doing like a big worldwide thing of all the characters being split up across the world to take on this global threat, and it's like, oh, it's another, it's like, oh, it's like the next step above like how big they did Heroes Rising. But instead, the movie does kind of a swerve, and it's like, actually, it's like a very like the whole set, like the whole second act, which was completely out of the marketing, is just this very kind of quiet like character piece, and it's yeah, a road movie, trip movie. Yes. I, honestly, that's kind of a big problem for me because all the marketing, all the posters, all everything basically lie to you. Because they make it this whole, oh, it's a big world thing, and literally no one besides Deku matters in this movie as far as established characters go. Like, they make a big deal about all these stealth suits, and they have these new yeah. designs. Like, those designs are literally in for, like, 30 seconds of the yeah, movie. Yeah, gone after the first scene. Pretty, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so, it, so it's really just, like, I feel like it just lies to you all the time going into it. And I, that, that that's just a point. That's just pointing against me for the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like to be fair, like what it's like a lot of game, like a lot of games and like other other media have done that too, like you in the past. Because like <laughs> off the top of my head, I oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with it. It's just a matter of it just it's false advertising in a lot of regards. Do you think you would have a different opinion if the marketing leaned towards more of a? In this movie, Deku is going to be a fugitive on the run. Do you think your opinion of the movie would change if that was how the marketing would go? Possibly a little bit. It would help, at least as far as, you know, setting up expectations, which I know some of you didn't go in with any sort of knowledge, which is fine. Don't get me wrong. It's just one of those. They spent a lot of time trying to hype this movie up as, oh, it's the big trio doing this world mission thing. And it's like, none of that matters. Why did you market it this way? It's just like, I don't know. It, it just kind of confuses me as to why they did it sure. that way. I will say from like the opposite side of kind of like the spectrum, I was very surprised by that and it kind of improved my enjoyment of the movie in a way like i honestly during the second act i wasn't sure what was going to happen and i was like oh this is this is nice to be like in, in, this in age suspense of like yeah yeah like in this age of like oh uh movies are uh you, you'll probably get spoilers in the hey first jack night. Mm -hmm. did yes. you know gogeta's and dragon ball super broly <laughs> wow you know what i had no idea oh God, <laughs> especially because of the marketing but so the dumbest part of that was they did that before it even came out in Japan. So it's like, what the hell are you doing? It's like, why, why would you ruin that? But <laughs> I guess that's a topic for another day. But yeah, I, I enjoyed Deku and Rhodey's European Vacation. <laughs> uh, that's the new title of the movie. Uh, um, I was just, yeah, I was, it was nice to be able to go in and be like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen next. 
I, I, I think what makes it work is the, is that because it's so different. Like, again, like, the, with Hero, we had Heroes Rising to be the movie where all of Class 1A get to work together to do a thing. So it's like, we, on the one hand, it is kind of a shame that, again, like, yeah, pretty much everybody else is just there for quick cameos of just cutting them and being like, oh, well, have them very quickly throw a punch and then cut away. So it's <laughs> like, on the one hand, it is kind of a shame because, like, you really like these characters, you want to see more of them. Mm. But at the same time, it's also kind of like, it's refreshing because it's like, like the movie is isn't like I mean the yeah, marketing aside the movie itself isn't trying to really lie and say that oh these characters are more important it is like very clearly being like no the movie is about Rhodey and Deku and that's all that matters and it's like because the movie is like so focused on telling this this very like isolated story like over a bit like it's it's choosing to tell an isolated story over a huge worldwide problem and I think it's just by just by doing that one change like it's different than pretty much every other like my hero like piece of media it's like mm-hmm. it's it's a story that you couldn't like e- like you have like the school briefs novels which are just like oh here's this the slice of life uh, adventures of the kids that, like at school and then you have then yeah then you have like yeah just like the main manga which is the big like end of world like story of just like the heroes versus villains and then you got like mm-hmm. Like vigilantes, which is just oh the side story of like these like these are these underdog characters doing their own problems. It's like here you have like a mo- and like the other two movies told like stories of like oh here's just kind of like extended uh, like they like shortened slash extended arcs. While with here it's like you have a story that you pretty much couldn't tell at any other point in the series, like in at, 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 in any media or like format of just oh here's De- Deku's on the run for murder and it's him and this like urchin kid just basically like hiking it in the woods all alone because they have nowhere else to go and so you basically just follow this like like the the entire act two is just them two just just on the just on the run on the wood like in the woods just alone just trying <laughs> just to survive it. i would agree if the movie also didn't desperately try to make bakugo and todoroki still around and viable for things like like if, if, it, if it just went hard all in on deku and Rodi. They're the only ones around. They're the only ones who do anything fine. I can accept that. It's just that they create this worldwide problem and then just hyper-focus on these two characters. So it's like, is it a big thing that needs to be dealt with or are we making it a character story? It feels very unsure of what it wants to be. And th- and, th- and that's... And that's and that's fair. Like I feel, I feel like that, I've, mm-hmm. that's 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 a criticism that that I think is yeah. Again, like like again, like the Bakugo and Todoroki not doing much doesn't really bother me. But again, because since they are clearly more important than everybody else in the cast, that I can understand being like, oh, I wish I wish either they had more to do or what they did mattered more. I think I think that that that's that's more and especially again like the the juxtaposition between the worldwide threat and the smaller character story. It's like yeah, it's something that I can see. N- I can see like a lot of people not as like buying uh, as well. It's like just like swer- controversial swerves like that is something that like <laughs> I'm that I'm personally a fan. I'm personally a fan. Like like in mo in the movies, whenever you see like a controversial discussion that gets like a lot of shit online, I'm usually the one person to be like, oh, that was good. I like I, I like it. I when feel you- like a be- I feel like a better way to have done this would to have been. There's no big world ending threat. Say. Deku's on like his internship with like during the whole um Endeavor agency <laughs> stuff. Like cuz there's a good not like a couple weeks where he's doing that. So he's just doing his usual thing. He runs into Rody and they stumble across something then he has to handle it now. Like maybe the whole murder thing happened so he can't go back. So you come up with a better way to separate him that way you can just focus on him so it's not some big global thing that they suddenly have to worry yeah. about. It's just a weird contradiction between where the focus wants to be versus the stakes they're trying mm-hmm. to raise. I, I agree with that a lot. It seems like each time they're trying to go a little bit you know, bigger and more bombastic and it always has to be this even grander uh, world ending threat that they have to solve and it's just it would be nice to see them kind of do like how you said there's kind of losing its focus if they just focus personally on Deku and Rhodey traveling and focusing on a more personal uh problem between the two or whatever with what mm-hmm. they're trying to fix yeah because even when i was there was there was a point in the film where i was thinking to myself this feels like this is if it's as big as this thing is actually is then why have we not heard about us in the manga in some way 
you know that like it feels like it just came out of yeah. nowhere and it's like whoa and we have to get the whole world involved it's like if the whole world's involved why is only japan's 1a class of 1a doing sure. anything about it well, well, to, well, to be fair, it's like it, well, to be fair, the the uh, the uh, the uh, story implies that it's like oh, it's not it's not just one A, it's like everybody. It's just it's just the camera only focuses on one A because is it really is it really is it really is like is it really everyone if we only see certain people that we already know? <laughs> we got the Egyptian like, guy. He's yeah, cool. that, I was <laughs> just thinking yeah. about that guy, the best character in the movie. <laughs> it's it's like okay, if you want to do the big world ending catastrophe thing, fine. Then this would have been the perfect opportunity to have like heroes from different countries around doing things. It's like, okay, you can't have it both ways, movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, yeah, no, it's like it's like the the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, scenes in America with Hawks doing stuff. It's like we, we in this we aren't going to go into like spoilers uh, for the manga and stuff, but they do in they have introduced recently uh, the the uh, an American like the American number one superhero. So the whole time watching and be like, I wonder what they're doing. It's like I wonder what they're doing at this time. Watching some Netflix. Yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah there there are some like funny things like that. Yeah. You know, just taking a break. PTO. <laughs> yeah. Japan's got this. It's my day off. <laughs> I do agree, uh, like, sort of, like, on one hand, yeah, I, I understand the part about, like, seeing all the other world heroes, but also, on the other hand, <laughs> like, I also see it as code for, I don't think they'd want to make a lot of, like, unique character designs just for, just to see. But that's the argument. Uh, <laughs> just to oh, see no, the rest I, of the I world. I get that, which is, which, I, I, I totally get that. It's just why I think they should have scaled the threat yeah. down completely and just made it a... Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Deku's on yeah. his hero business, doing his own thing, yeah. and stumbles into yeah. something bigger that he has to yeah, handle. But if they if they came up with all those designs, that's a lot of toys that you can make. Yes. <laughs> oh shit! I can't wait yeah. to get the Egyptian man. A lot of posters. <laughs> That is that is that is funny because like in the background like like all, all of like the the heroes that they created for like uh, two hero like for the first movie like the ones that appear in America and the ones that appeared at the I Island they're all in the background of like the the fights like they're like the the electric guy uh, the Godzilla guys in the background oh, really? uh, there so it's like I, I like they, they they did like kind of like use like those cameos of like the the one off random characters that they created they'd be like oh yeah let 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 let's make use of them like a lot of the yeah. ones that you can notice are like ones that either yeah are a lot of ones that have like appeared in the background mm-hmm. of like movies or the series so it's like oh it's like stuff like that is like fun for like fan service thing like oh it doesn't matter but if you notice them you'd be like oh hey it's that random guy from that one thing it's a neat Easter yeah like Egyptian man comes back in the manga which I'm like mm. I have oh, a really yeah. important question is Egyptian guy is he in the manga or is he yes <laughs> yeah he, he yeah he's a canon character yeah, he, he showed up in the manga like shortly after the movie came out let's yeah. go like, 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 it, 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 it's, it's like a fun like yeah, connection cameo found Joey's <laughs> favorite <laughs> fighter uh, Egyptian Egyptian guy's canon Rebecca from the first movie is canon Melissa Melissa I'm oh, sorry Melissa. <laughs> uh, sorry. the blonde one yeah, yeah. Not, nine is technically canon because he appears he cameos in the yeah. manga yeah mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no! So, you know, Asthma, all, all the movies are technically canon. It's like a, no matter what people like to argue, it's like there's enough like in them that are referenced in like the, like they're all like vaguely referenced to the point where it's like oh you don't need to watch the movies in order to understand in the manga. But it's like oh it's like they're, they they obviously like they happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The only one that technically matters is the first one again, just because of Melissa, but. Yeah, because she actually like she like she well she she doesn't like sp- like they don't specifically say that oh she she does this but she does do something later in the yeah she does get specifically uh, she, she, named she's wrong. mentioned my name a few she's mentioned my name a few times in the manga oh and so. also no spoilers but another character that shows up later in the manga is a reference to something in Two Heroes which is which end up being really clever <laughs> I did really appreciate yeah. that too but no spoilers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I want uh, just to, yeah, to next yeah, because we talked about a lot of the character stuff is the to talk about uh, Rhodey because he is technically the main character of the movie, and it's like mm-hmm. yeah, it, it, as, as many as many misgivings as I have about this movie, he is easily the best part of it. Yeah, yes. what, what I was what I'm glad about him is like yeah, because I really like Melissa and David Shield. I like uh, Katsuma and Mahiro and Heroes Rising, but they're, they're they're ultimately like they're 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 essentially like they're passive supporting characters. Like they have their own like beliefs and feelings that they're going through. But but it's like ultimately they're they're there to support uh, Midoriya. I disagree on Melissa, but yeah, yeah but Melissa does a lot like like thematically, but it's like she doesn't really have like she doesn't change or grow in the story. Like Rhodey is like he, he goes through a full arc in the movie, and it's like it's mm-hmm. all it's, it is very much like focused on him. Like he has like several scenes that are just on him, like without Midoriya, 
and it's like it, it feels it felt to me a lot like with 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 Broly and how like uh, I, Ch- Chila is basically the main character of that because she's the one who like goes through an arc through the whole thing and that she's kind of like the she's like the uh, the moral compass of the entire thing mm. and it's like I I really like when I think that the best way to for these movies to use like their original characters is to have them like just just to be like j- just just make them the main characters and just like let them like be the ones that go through yeah because obviously like our main characters in the main series aren't really going to go through any big changes because they can't so let let the new characters actually go through a full arc and like change character and like have have the main character from the main series help change them and i think using that like really grounds the story like i do that that's what grounded broly really well and that's what grounds this Mm -hmm. yeah having the main character be the passive uh protagonist rather than an active one is interesting to see for something like Mm -hmm. my hero because we've seen deku grow so much since the very beginning and now you kind of see him more doing the hero side of things like, of yeah, helping like the, the more grow. like doing some mentoring along the way well it's mm-hmm. a, it's a it's a movie characters aren't the main co- co- uh, manga or comic whatever characters aren't allowed to change in these things <laughs> sadly just how the world works uh, i thought it was pretty funny that like e- even now we're like we're so many years removed from uh like the ua beginnings arc and deku getting like mastering like sort of mastering his powers and he's still like man i can't wait to be a hero one day I'm like, you're, <laughs> you're, you're stopping a terrorist organization what are you talking about <laughs> and I'm pretty- it's like you're already you're, it's like it's like you're it's like most of the characters in one a are already better than yeah. most pros. Like, mm-hmm. you already you, s- you saved an entire you saved a convention you saved an entire island community you saved <laughs> it's like uh deku you sure about that <laughs> imposter syndrome's a bitch <laughs> yeah most kids are better than most pros at this point rip to the <laughs> sandman who got compressed oh my god <laughs> <laughs> r.i.p <laughs> jesus uh it was it was nice that uh this movie didn't repeat again the whole like oh i like like, like why the, the, the whole um oh, midoriya dealing with one for all thing is that because they did that in the first movie and the second movie and this one it's like oh you know like we we don't need to we don't need to dig that well up again it's I'm just that like, one for yeah. all is just like it, 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 it i don't think it's like i think it's like just mentioned as being like oh when, when he when he's like when he's like when, when he's like oh activating his powers and he thinks about one for all but other than that yeah. other than that and him using black whip to swing around like spider-man but other than <laughs> he that was so much it's like, like yeah Spider-Man. like the, it, it it doesn't actually, yeah, like him, him, like trying, like be, be, like trying to be like better at one for all. Like that, that, that doesn't matter in this movie, and I'm glad because it's like, oh, we don't, we don't need to keep digging up that well. It's like, yeah, yeah. we, we know what yeah. this series is about. It's like, just, yeah, don't. Need I to, need like, another like, flashback to the first episode. Just to <laughs> yeah. me. I want to see him cry again. God damn it! I was honestly shocked we didn't have Deku explaining this is a world filled with superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Everybody really? Has some superhuman ability. <laughs> Tell me more. It was also very refreshing to see uh, that this movie was pretty far removed from anything of Shigaraki's group and the League of Villains and all that. Yes, that made me very happy. It's like, oh, we can we can do other stuff besides the League of Villains. Yeah. Although, I just thought of something funny. <laughs> like, It's like, you think Shigaraki saw the news, it's like, what the hell happened? <laughs> Well, it, it's it's funny because you think that like because it, it theoretically it, if if Humorize won, then basically like the the uh, the uh, Paranormal Liberation Front would basically just like they, they they they're 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 basically in hiding this whole time, and so it's like oh if they win, then Shigaraki comes up all completed, and he's just like well t- time time to deal with these fuckers, <laughs> and it's like so it would basically be a war arc between Humorize and uh, the League of Villains, the, 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 the front, yeah, the League of Villains, and it'd be like you know what I kind of want to see that that. That uh, what if story? You want that, that, would, that would be fun. If just the villain versus villain war. I'll, I'll I'll get started writing right away. <laughs> Do it now. on Ao3 right now. It, it is it is funny you mentioned that like the League of Vill- yeah the League of Villains aren't involved in here because uh, one of the things I think is really cool about the movie is that is how it, it connects to the main series in a very clever way but ex- by expanding on two things that were briefly mentioned like like humorize like the idea of a cult that worships the quirk singularity theory is like that that's that's something that that's been mentioned a couple times uh in the series so actually getting mm-hmm. to see the cult is like oh that's actually really cool and then and it, it, this this is this is kind of a minor spoiler but it's later revealed that the doctor that like works with all for one and shigaraki uh he's the one who created the quirk singularity theory so it's like there is this kind of like inherent connection of like oh the technically the League of Villains do kind of have an in it the an accidental involvement in this, 
And then you also have uh, that they use the trigger drug, which of course, which the the, the trigger drug is what is in the main <laughs> series. It's like the stuff that mm -hmm. was used during the overall arc, and uh, ending uses it when he fights uh, when he fights like Endeavor and all of them. But like it, it's primarily used in My Hero Academia Vigilantes. It's mm -hmm. like the 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 gas is like the main driving force of like the first like the first half of the series. So I think yeah, as like a fan, as a big fan of Vigilantes, just seeing like yeah the the trigger used in like a pretty big way and like expanded upon that. Like having other characters use it in, on like a global scale is something I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. No, the trigger it's drug all coming together. <laughs> the trigger drug turns your <laughs> immediately changes your body to look like a, stu a studio trigger character. Oh god! No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Actually, on the topic of um, humor eyes, I, I couldn't help noticing it. I was I was talking to my friend about it, like after the movie that this is that this group is just uh, Team Plasma from Pokemon Black and White, and I couldn't help <laughs> thinking about it the entire time I was watching the movie. Oh, no. Like, fucking Mirror Man, he looks like Getsus. His whole <laughs> thing just looks like Team Plasma. It, it, it quite literally looks like the ending to the game. It's like... Team, yeah, team, team Plasma if they didn't actually have any points whatsoever. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon Black and White 3 on sale now. <laughs> I, I did like the, like the, how... I, I did like... Hey, humor is just, just kind of weird because I feel like I... The, I, I, I like the I like the idea behind them. Just like yeah, again, like the, this whole idea of that the a villain group, like a cult that like hates quirks and like wants like the the quirk like just wants to uh, extinguish all like quirk life. And it's like I think I think it's a it's a really cool idea. And I, I think they do a lot of like interesting things about like some of the soldiers and seeing like what they do and how they react. But I I think it's like I'm. In a different movie, I feel like a movie that mainly focused on humor eyes would be one that's really that would be really fascinating in this universe. Like, like they they briefly mentioned about like oh like oh like all like the quirkless people that are involved in humor eyes, and I'm like I kind of want to hear like what they like like the, how how do quirkless people that like just uh, that feel uh, discriminated against against like the the majority quirk population how do they feel like like why like what what do they do like how do they fight against uh, like the the uh, I mean other other than the guns that they use. Like, what do they do to, to combat them? It's like, how do they feel about uh, this world, the, like, the world, and, like, how do they feel about, like, the actual, like, the singularity thing? And it's like, because yeah. we only yeah. really hear from the quirk people. Like, we have, we have like, the, the bow girl Barrows, who is the whole thing of, like, oh, like, I, I think my quirk is, uh, is a sickness, so I'm, like, basically donating my body to the cause. And then you have, like, pretty much everybody else who are just, just like, random thugs who are like, we're only here because we want to survive. <laughs> I don't want to die. Actually, yeah, we don't actually I, care. I, I'd, 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 I would, I would, I would agree if they didn't establish earlier in the movie that unleashing all those drugs basically kills you. Yeah, what a scene. So it's like I'm. So, so I was like, I'm sorry. How many quirk people do you have on your team that are basically suicidal? Yeah, mm. I imagine they have like some sort of like <laughs> vaccine for them or some something. Oh, they just if it was away. like if it was like if it was like the overhaul drug where it completely just got rid of quirks, then sure, I understand that, but. The way they're doing it is like, okay, no, these people are just straight up suicidal. Yeah, it, it didn't, from the movie, it definitely didn't sound like they were having some sort of vaccine or they were being spared or anything. It sounded like the people with quirks were deliberately like, yeah, I'm sacrificing myself for this. Mm. And there were quite yeah. a few of them. Yeah. yeah. And one of them literally does that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, it's just one of those I'm very confused as to what the motive mm. is here. I feel like with a cult mindset, it makes sense that, like, okay, they would definitely be very far deranged. Yeah, but but in which in which case I need more backstory and information. Yeah, here. And, and I wish we got to hear more from like the quirkless side because it, it would have been like uh, in like the Avatar. It would be like the Avatar comics or like in Korra season one of like the whole like the whole like Bender versus non-Bender uh, thing. Well, I mean, this is also a sci-fi world with tons of like hero gear and stuff. I would have preferred it if it was just nothing but quirkless people using high-tech gadgets to fight them or something. Yeah, I, w I was genuinely hoping, like before, before we found out who Flecturn was, I was genuinely hoping that he was a quirkless guy because, like, wouldn't it be so cool to have like a quirkless main villain? It's like, oh, like, like see, mm, see yes. what he does, like someone like who just just despises quirks. Yeah. I did think like what they ended up going for of being like, oh, I have a quirk that fucking sucks, so I hate all quirks. How they did to that, I think, like, okay, that that makes sense, but I do think it would have been so much more original if they went with yeah a quirkless villain. It's just I'm blue, dava dee dava My mom, I was never hugged as a child. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of him whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's no, I like the, uh, yeah, the thought of a quirkless villain too that kind of organizes this whole thing because then there would be a whole 
there could be a whole moral dilemma with Deku finally getting there, realizing that he's just quirkless. Mm. And, like, you know, Deku could easily defeat him. But. So. <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's, like, there's like that moral dilemma of, like, him understanding where he's coming from as opposed to... Yeah, and just instead we get the villain who's just there for Deku to punch really hard until he finally wins. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like <laughs> I mean the whole thing of yeah, he's he's just another punching bag essentially. <laughs> he's like it, it ends up with being oh you you don't like quirks because you never learned to love yours, and it could have been it's like, much. No, it's like no, he has very good reason to not like his quirk Deku. Please be a little sympathetic here. If he got one hug, he would have been okay. <laughs> so sad. Mm. <laughs> I, I did. There, there is like the kind of there. I, I, I think there's like like. I, I feel like this is intentional, just kind of like the, in, there, there is like a slight uh, intentional parallel between Flecturn and Shigaraki. Just the whole idea of, oh, a villain who's like quirk is like, oh, he can't shut off and because of that he can't like have any intimate connections with people and this causes him to turn into uh, oh, a raging they're... psychopath. So I, I feel like there is like there is some kind of like intentional parallelisms of like, oh, Deku's coming against a crazed mass killer who also like has like these problems with quirks and like in, in some way ha in some ways has like genuine uh like there there is like genuine reason of like how he came down this path, but also being like, yeah, everything you did doesn't actually like <laughs> there is no uh like uh, extreme between like oh like my my quirk sucks because I can't but I can't be held versus I'm gonna bomb several cities around the world. Uh, I would disagree if only because Shigaraki does the exact same thing Ochoko does where he just extends his pinky finger whenever he holds anything so he has many ways around that versus Mirror Guy literally can't turn any of it off because that, that bit kind of bothered me. It's like Dick is like oh no it's like no you just gave up you didn't try hard enough. It's like how the fuck do you know his life story all of a sudden? Yeah Deku be more considerate. Yeah, it's like be more considering. It's like you don't know what he went through. Maybe he did try everything he possibly could, and it just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I still, I'll say one thing that while we're on the topic of, uh, I'm blue, daba di baba die. <laughs> uh, I like that. I like how they beat him uh, yeah. just by outsmarting him, which I will always appreciate whenever they get, that I gets mean, it involved. Did they really outsmart him? Yeah. They kind of distracted him, and mm. Deku just punched him until he won. He, yeah, he won. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah, plus that... ultra on it, which I that's one of the complaints that I have with the final battle is like I was really hoping that there was some secret you know weakness or some sort of thing, so, that some kind of clever way to get around. Yeah, it. clever yeah. way to get around it. No, it's just keep punching, keep punching, go yeah. plus ultra. <laughs> yeah, just I mean, punch, in, just punch until I win. And it's like a quarter into the fight. There's like a, with the whole lasers going on as well. They they present it as if like he's borderline going to die now. But no, I'm gonna. A little bit just chirps him up, and now I'm just gonna start punching again. Even though I'm embracing all the punches that I'm delivering, it goes right back yeah. to me. But I've all of a sudden got all this energy back. Let's keep going. You know <laughs> Can what? I go into it's... a tangent of the battles. Go for it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So okay, the whole battles. A lot of them were really, really cool. I loved Deku versus the Crazy Twins, or ba Deku ba ba Bakugan Goku. versus the <laughs> yeah. Bakugan versus the De the Crazy Twins, and. Uh, Todoroki's battle with the guy was pretty cool, although it ended just kind of like, what? Oh, that was another they one. Fell they, was like, the they fell out of water. They fell out of they both yeah, died. Ba goes the, All you have to do is stop. Yeah, Bakugo's <laughs> the only decent fight, and even I don't think that's super good. But it's like, we mm -hmm. mentioned Deku versus Final Boss is kind of not good, and I, Todoroki's fight just turns into another... I'll try freezing him really hard. Oh, that didn't work. Now I'll put him on fire really hard. Oh, did that oh, not work? Did it both at the same time. Hold it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's just one of those. He just expect. He just like. It's like Deku. He just punches in a more yeah. MP fashion way until he wins. It's like, eh. Oh. Yeah, but I also, with, with the uh, whole final fight, it it seemed like a bit ridiculous that like you know they they made the whole dramatic sh uh, scene of oh Deku got shot by lasers and now he's bleeding out and yeah. all that and then like literally 10 seconds later he gets back up and he's like you know not totally fine. held back at all yeah punching again and taking all the punches back and still being fine <laughs> it's just like 
I know that he's gotten stronger, but this is a bit much. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, it's like it's 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 like his limb should be falling off at this that, point. That, that, it, that, it, yeah. that is a problem that I have like with, with all three of the movies is that the character, all of the characters and like heroes and villains take tremendous beatings, and it's like they they, they yes. bleed like it's it's basically like they're like okay, we're on a movie, we can have the characters bleed, so we're gonna make them bleed mm-hmm. like crazy, yeah. and it's like it, it's just like yeah, everybody like everybody takes so much punishment like on both sides that it feels mm-hmm. like like. Again, yeah. like you have like in Heroes Rising, Shoto should have fucking killed Chimera with his ice thing. I think no, he did. <laughs> no, honest to God, yeah. think like like Todoroki killed that guy. Bakugo killed the, the yeah, first Bakugo guy in the beginning. Yeah, Bakugo killed the twins. I don't want, I don't want to see like the, the yeah. ending thing where they have them like they're carrying them off. Like no, Bakugo murdered them. It's yeah, okay. Yeah, no, they got better, him with dude. body bags. Yeah, Bakugo has a kill count in these movies. Like in the second movie, like before like the major major attack on the when they were trying to get the twins like it bakugo killed like the puppet guy (laughs) (laughs) fuck mommy man yeah and then another aspect that was interesting but it never seems to work with me with animated movies is like the whole they did a lot of the 3D camera going around everybody and yeah the swooshing you know, around. Yeah, that, the, the, see, I was gonna say like I I loved what they did with the cam like that that they that they were just like they, that they that they were just like yeah how how how, how, would you, how would we just throw the camera around everywhere like you have like <laughs> what, you, you have like the rod like ch- uh, Roddy uh, Midoriya chasing Roddy where I could just think of one jump ahead of the bread line. <laughs> <laughs> I, Honestly, the Deku chasing Roddy part was probably the best action piece in the movie. <laughs> Uh, mm. In my opinion, cinematically, it's the most interesting applic. It's the most interesting application of what's going on because you have this guy who's f- effectively quirkless. He's Roddy's not actually quirkless, but as far as action goes, he's effectively quirkless. Able to just use his knowledge and hardcore parkour skills to just kind of <laughs> evade Deku for a long period of time. It makes for a more interesting dynamic than just again shonen protagonists. You know, just hit him with a bigger beam than the other guy sort of situation. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. okay, okay, then you follow that up with uh, with uh, the, the, them escaping the police and you have Midoriya swinging around the city and you get all those like really cool camera shots. Like like him like jumping around the the uh, the uh, not San Francisco bridge. I thought that was cool. <laughs> you yes. Have the, Sniper yeah. Later. That was really cool. How the camera was like. You, you, yeah, you have the fight. You have the fight when uh, sh- uh, Todoroki and Bakko meet up with them at the border, and it's like it, the the whole fight is told within like one camera shot. I thought that was really cool what they did. You have like a lot of the camera movements of but when Bakko is fighting the twins around the mountain, it's like I, I, I like I like that they didn't just try to be like all static. It's like they, they they tried to give they had to give as many fights as possible like their own like kind of clever uh, like yeah camera twists. There was definitely an effort put in. Yeah, there's definitely. I feel like it was a bit over the top for me personally. I it's it's a bit less clear when it's kind of moving around everywhere. It's harder for me to see who's doing what or what exactly is happening. So I I definitely liked it with the uh, chasing at the beginning. That was pretty easy to follow. But like the whole going around the helicopter, I have no idea which way's up, which way's down, and all that. Personally, that was a little bit too much for me. That's fair. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I see where you're coming from, Kevin. And like, but also, like on like on one hand, yeah, I yeah, I can definitely see or not see, depending on who you are. <laughs> what you what you uh, I'm what blind. You but also, <laughs> oh man, like, my glasses. Like when I think about it, it's sort of like I I, I sort of like to think of it, like it sort of like emphasizes emphasizes more like the superhuman nature of like this the scenes that are going on, like how how crazy. I guess that's getting. true. Yeah, yeah, this is how this is how Deku or Bakugo would be seeing it. As I really felt like it. I was Deku. <laughs> But the, yeah, the one just makes you feel like Spider Man. <laughs> the one's just review, six out of ten. <laughs> for, 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 for the uh, for the Bakugo fight again, like no straight up spoilers, but for people who have read the manga, that fight had to have been like a reference to something that happens to Bakugo in the manga, right? Like, yeah, uh, I guess there, 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 there's there, 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 there's one shot there, at there, least. There, there's looks, yeah, there, yeah. There, there's a similar paneling, but the twins are just so out of nowhere. I mean, then, then that's sort of my problem with the Bakugo and Todoroki fights at the end. They're just guys for them to fight rather than actually mattering in the, any sense, so... Like, I, 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 at least the Joker twins are fun. It's a, At least it's just fun of just them. <laughs> yeah, like, that, 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 that's, that, that's a personal opinion thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I didn't but, find them all yeah, right. I kind of wanted to slap them all. Like, 
I, 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 it's it's kind of a it's, it, like it was annoying like, just like they, they have three giant guys that it's like I feel like at that point like why, why don't you just have one giant guy that they that you just use throughout the whole movie it's like you have like the first guy you have the first guy that they fight when uh, when when Roddy calls them you have the second guy during the border fight and then you have the third one the Todoroki ones so, and they're all pretty much like very similar designs like at that point just get one giant guy like you didn't mm, need to yeah. have three I was gutted for Lady Robin Hood like she was cool uh, I would like her more if there wasn't. Uh, she's very similar to a character very far in the manga that we see later, which I won't get into spoiler territory for. I know that mentioning that inherently is a little bit spoilery, but as someone who is current with the manga, it's kind of like, oh, I see what they're doing. Yeah, no, it, it, it is very like it, it is. It, they're, they're both they're both bad. They're both badass sniper ladies. So it's like it, it was. It, they also have the exact same boots. So I'm like, yeah, Horikoshi. The, the, is, same, <laughs> same same boots and same hairstyle. Yeah, Horikoshi literally he, he ripped off uh, his own design for that. And it's like, yeah, she she would be. Yeah, it's a thing of like, yeah, like the, that that character was like so good on her own that it feels like yeah, it's pretty much just it's just a copy of it. Only now she has a bow, and it's like there are there are little things like sure. again like you have like the thing of like her belief that her quirk is a curse and then at the end her committing suicide when she feels that everything is done it's like the, 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 it's like little things like that are like oh it like it gives a little bit of dimension to like a character that pretty much has no character that I appreciated but it's also like of like oh if this was a different movie I wish like she would have had more of like a character yeah mm-hmm. but again it's like the, the movie is like it's very clear that like oh Rhodey's really much the only character that matters and everybody else is just kind of there, there for action sure I did, and and uh, in, in the Bak- the Bakugo fight did end with probably one of my absolute favorite Bakugo moments. Period, of just him him doing the All Might thing of just putting his hand up. Only he has like the only how he's given the, the he's given the finger thumbs down, and it's, it's so perfect because it it, it fits in with like the the kind of like the theme the theming and the parallelism around the entire series of like you have All Might like you have All Might's thing you have Endeavor doing it you have Midoriya doing it you have like other characters doing it later in the manga and it's like so seeing Bakko do it it's like oh it's like you're seeing how how everybody like is like mimicking All Might in their own ways and it's just like it's very like it, it's good in both a character and a thematic way yeah too bad no one's nice there moment. to see you do it Bakugo <laughs> eh, some, hey we are we won <laughs> <laughs> and the winner was you <laughs> <laughs> the credits. <laughs> good. It's like, yeah, that's it. We're done here. <laughs> yeah. And then, and also in the final fight, it's like I, 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 I'm a sucker for it. Is that they, 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 uh, they uh, brought, brought, brought back classic you say run. Yeah. It's like they, they, they haven't yes. used classic you say run in like, mm. uh, like I think Ages. since the first movie. Yeah. So the fact that they, that they brought it back out, I'm like, you know what? They got me. Midoriya yeah. goes full, 100 percent full cowling, and I'm like, it doesn't make any sense, but it's so cool. I don't care. And and he yeah, he, he beats Flecter nice. in the same way that All Might beat uh, the USJ Nomu. Where he's like he's basically just giving him a barrage of punches that are like super super fast, basically just to overload, basically to go to punch him faster than his quirk can mm-hmm. like repel it, like because like that was what the, the Nomu. It's like every time you punched it, it like the 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 impact sort of re- like a... yeah re- repelled the punch. Impact. So the idea was that All Might punched him fast enough that they basically like, the 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 repelling was useless. So Midori basically did that to fight him. Only just it just looks like it's on a movie budget, so it looks like more flashier than it like it probably was in. like... Like quote unquote in real life, <laughs> it looks a lot cooler in Deku's head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. that's that's squat <laughs> that, that yeah. he does for that one shot, and then he's starts the like aura! shooting his arm, and then he's multiplying. I'm like, what is this? Yeah, but although uh, it's like I, it's like it's like I knew it was coming. I knew this ending was coming, but like honestly, I fell into the same boat. I still got really excited anyway. <laughs> See, like um, the three I was, of us. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Go, Joe. Yeah, you go. No, I was gonna say like I was, you know, I was. I was just gonna say like me, Kevin, and Jack all watch the movie together, and Jack was gonna let you finish up the rest. Like, <laughs> I mean, I could, I, I could feel my seat vibrating a bit, and Joey was oh. sitting like two seats next to me, and he was jumping up and down the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, like I, wow, Joey like that. <laughs> he seemed also, to really like the buff guy. <laughs> One man he seems to really love the speedo guy. Uh, What's up, Kevin? The uh, one, one thing I also really enjoyed was the final reveal of uh, Rhodey's quirk. That was I feel was very well done. Just kind of like the whole like the bird. You don't know exactly. Pori was that his name? Yes, Pino. 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 Uh, I wouldn't uh, just I. Just as a very quick aside, I wish they didn't call out to, oh, it's this big mystery as to what his quirk is like three times in the movie. It's like, you only need to do it once. We're, we don't yeah, have that. Yeah, they should we have just have, done it once. Yeah, so we don't, have, we don't have that short-term of memory movie. 
Yeah, but it was nice uh, the way they did it. Kind of like he's, you know, feigning of uh, showing that he is lying to the guy or whatever. But you or that you don't know that. But you see the bird kind of Pino look back and be all like, uh, and he gives the punch. No. I was like, yes. yeah, he gives the punch or whatever. <laughs> and then it's like you're kind of like wondering, like, uh, okay, it's obviously a setup, but uh, I wonder why Pino is saying that or what's going on. And then when they reveal that, I'm just like, oh, that makes sense. That's nice a cute little thing and then it, when they're finally saying goodbye at the end and you know Pino's showing the true thoughts but he's all being all like oh I'm, I'm cool yeah. I don't I don't, I don't, yeah. don't hug me I, I, it's not like I'm gonna miss <laughs> you or something but Baka <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, if 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 I had to change one thing, I think the 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 uh, the third because you have the first time when when they're when they're like hanging out in the barn and he and he's like oh what's what's your quirk and then they they cut away right before he says it then like then the second time then like, this, this will be important later and yeah, yeah. then the second time when it when when they they, they ref like they have the audio go back and he's like oh so so what's your quirk Rody and then it's like my quirk is and then they stop and then as he's walking away they play that again and I'm like you didn't need to play that a third time instead just, just wait a just, minute. Just, 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 I need a fourth time. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, so if they just the start the sentence on him explaining the quirk, like when he's like walking, like all completely bloodied, I feel like that would have been better instead of yeah, repeating Midoriya saying, "So what's your quirk?" Like I for the third time, it's like yeah, you didn't need. We that third get time. it. We get yeah. it. Movie. <laughs> all it's the, important. Like yeah, one of the funniest, thing, one of the funnier things looking back on it is like also like when. <laughs> like you see Deku taking all these fucking shots, and then Rodi, like the most realistic thing is like Rodi gets shot once, and he's almost dead on the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ow, my fucking ankle. <laughs> it's like if you have a good if you have, if you have, if you have a good quirk in this universe, you get the auxiliary power of just being fucking tough as hell. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, 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 and he bleeds like crazy. It's just like the whole wall is completely red. And it's like, how much blood do you got, man? It was a lot of ketchup. <laughs> I was gonna say, he, he took a lot of ketchup from the food court. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're on the run, you gotta eat something. Mm. Yeah. Go good with my fries. Mm-hmm. As, as one other thing with uh, Flecturn is that I did I did really appreciate as a big fan of his voice acting I did really appreciate hearing Robbie Damon as Flecturn yes. and he did a real and because I, I watched him both anim, in English and Japanese and I honestly think the English performance uh, of him is much better like in in, in Japanese he, he sounds just much more he, he, he sounds much more bored in like comparison of just like a very a very monotone he, he sounds like a cult leader but it's like it's a very monotone cult leader while like Damon kind of gives like he, he, he gives a little like like a bit more like uh, character uh, to to his like to his very like impassioned speeches. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Sounds very devoted to. I'm trying the to think. Of, he's trying to do. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a Goro Akechi reference. I can make there. <laughs> I was <laughs> go plus ultra already. Dirt bag. When when he's uh, when he's screaming, it does like there. You, you when, when, when he's screaming at the end, you 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 can hear a little bit of a catchy coming mm. out there. Yes, I I really appreciate that. I didn't recognize that it was Robbie Damon at the start. And I didn't really look up anything about this movie, but when he started to like ham it up, I'm like, "Oh, it's him." He did a really good job. Yeah. And uh, and Ryan Colt Levy, like, but both in English and Japanese for Roddy is really good. But Ryan Colt Levy is like, I I, I really liked it. I, again, it's, it's yes. mostly just because like the Eng- like just in like in English, you you're able to like as as English speakers, you can kind of like slightly more appreciate uh, the English like vocal performances. So it's like, yeah, I I, I personally like liked it a bit more. Right, right. It, it is weird mm. that uh, Christina V is Pino. Young Roddy. Pino, Pino oh. j- is is, is just yeah. He, she 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 plays young Roddy, but she's also Pino just just to do squeaky <laughs> noises. And I'm like, that's that's a waste of Christina V. Yeah, it's... <laughs> is that a trope? Hey, she did a good squeak. <laughs> Yeah, and then, and, then, yeah, and all, all, all the other performers are basically just yeah, they're they're they're, they're their usual good selves. Yeah, yes. like, yeah. Really good English dub cast. I, I will say. Uh, uh, the, it, 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 this has always been a problem with Bakugo, but it's especially a problem in this movie. Of ev- pretty much his only line is somebody saying, "Hey, Bakugo, help us do this," and him Fuck going, you. "Don't tell me what to do." <laughs> <laughs> he does say it a lot. He says it like five times in the movie, and yeah, I'm like, "Shut it, the it, fuck well, up!" His I friend's get fault for buffering him every time. <laughs> it, yeah, no, it's like, why are you here then if you don't want to do anything? <laughs> Well, no, well, it's it's him saying, "Stop telling me what to do." Does it? Anyway? I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's like, we get it. You're a sundere. Stop it. Like at the very least, it's like oh, thankfully yeah. it's as of now it seems like he isn't going to be doing that anymore. But it's like it's, again, it's just that, that, that yeah. was always this annoying thing of like yeah, it, it, it's not just a movie thing; it's just a Bakugo thing in it's general. Like, it's, it's like at, the, at this a point, growing pain of the series. Yeah, it's like at this point of the story, it's basically run its course. <laughs> so it's like you don't have to pretend anymore. It's okay, Bakugo. It's okay. 
Uh, also, it also kind of amused me that that Bach goes at the computer hacking, and he and, and he has the gall to call Midori a nerd. It's like, what good you're doing right now? <laughs> yeah. Although then uh, again, hacker noises. Oh, I'm a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> like to be fair, didn't like all Bach Bakugo did to like. It was like, oh man, where do we start looking? It's like he just presses sort uh, like uh, group uh, group by date by re- most recent date modifier. Yeah. 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 Idiots. <laughs> it was in the do not read folder. <laughs> To be fair, that is this, that is probably the smartest movie you could have done at the time. It's like, wow, how did Deku not figure that out? Yeah, <laughs> I like how they didn't make it. Yeah, over the top, like legit, like oh, I'm, I'm, I, I am to leave now. Bypassing the mainframe. Yeah, I'm in the Matrix. He he he, he just did the sensible thing of just sort by date. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, it, it, it's 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 because Bakko is smart, and it's like Midori is someone who like who, who over who overthinks things a lot sometimes. While he's just like he's very logical, so it's like yeah, of course he'd be the one to be like just. <laughs> Just do just do the easy uh, answer, stupid, and be like, "Oh yeah, that does make sense." <laughs> I don't know. Bakugan wasn't pretty smart there. He inserted a random USB into a computer that he had. He had no idea what was on it. it wasn't his computer? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's not his computer. computer. <laughs> the hotel computer. <laughs> oh, that 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 does right because uh, the 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 main the main city that they that 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 they visit for most of the movie is, is a is a o- o- Oceon. Which, if you're familiar, but Oceon is the name of a Star Wars uh, galaxy, and, oh, and and the city oh, and the, the the city that they escape to is uh, called Clade, or otherwise known as Crade, aka the, the that uh, one the assaults, enemy in Metroid. Yes, that, and also <laughs> the uh, the uh, the assault planet from the Last Jedi. So it's like again, I, I, I wonder if Horikoshi likes Star Wars. Yeah, mm. it, it, it is my favorite. It's just the, the the best. It's the best running gag. It's just literally every like almost every location in this series is just a Star Wars reference. Like in the last movie, they go to Naboo Island, and like they're like recently they have Jakku Hospital and the the Gungan Villa. Yeah, is it like the first the first episode? Like you, s- they're in like they're talking about like Tatooine, Tatooine. yeah, Tatooine <laughs> Station, yes. and then they go to Dagobah Beach. Did you guys ever notice how that tail guy, his costume kind of looks like Luke? <laughs> <gasps> oh you know what? I, I mean, never I mean, about he, that. I mean, he's just he's just a Westaboo in general because it's like, okay, Spinner's just obviously a Ninja Turtle. Uh, Stain's obviously you know more image comic-y yeah. sort of thing. It's like he's just a <laughs> and he's done like Marvel promotion, like Marvel promotional stuff too. <laughs> with no, no, yeah. he, he straight up do a drew a Deadpool issue once. Mm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's where, uh, yeah. well, because there was there was a manga. Where Deadpool was in Japan doing some stuff, and the joke is that he was trying to call Carol, but he butt dials All Might instead, and All Might actually shows up. No, <laughs> and, 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 and it's All Might drawn by Horikoshi too. Oh my god! Really yeah, yeah. yeah it's, 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 a really, it's a really funny like couple. And and they're, 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 I think I think they're fighting Thanos together. Really <laughs> I'll have to look into that. That's that <laughs> yeah. sounds hilarious. It's a massive shit post, and he doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, and I, I do. Uh, was you know because you know, and then of course, like I mean, Midoriya swinging around. It's like he's swinging around exactly like Spider Man, and it looks like Venom. So it's like, yeah, it's like he they they, they know what they're doing. It, it, it was funny because I, I watched the movie uh, with uh, with a friend of mine who he she she only got up to the overall arc so she hadn't got a chance to catch up with the rest of the series. Oh boy. So I was like, yeah, she doesn't she did, she didn't know about Black Widow. Yeah, yet. no, yeah, no, because because I was like I, I was like you know what you can actually see I was like I, I think you can watch this movie because they don't really like it, it, like there isn't really any like big like there's like one spoiler but the rest of it is pretty much standalone so you can watch it and then she sees Midori use Black Whip and she just gives me this dumbfounded look and I just go yeah he can do that now. And didn't say anything else. How the fuck did he become Spider Man? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, which, which, which I mean, I mean, like technically the movie doesn't like explain. It's just like, oh, it just d- he has Black Whip, and it's like, oh, if you've never seen, it just, it yeah. just assumes you read the manga slash watch the show. Yeah. Which, 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 which just kind of work in like a standalone thing of like, oh yeah, if you hadn't catched up and you don't know about the six quirks, and it's like, oh, he just he can do Black Whip. Yeah, sure, whatever. So it's like technically it doesn't actually spoil, which is funny because uh, the second movie did spoil like, oh, that he has multiple quirks like yeah. before the anime. Really revealed it uh yeah. and they didn't even show black whip so it was just kind of a thing of like that movie kind of spoiled it for no reason while this one just kind of they do it but they know it, it, they don't go into it's sort it's sort of because um one for all was already established to be you can only pass on if the user wills it so they already had plenty of outs for that yeah but it, it was a weird thing that yeah because they, 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 they literally could have judged to high like nine i wonder people, yeah. I, I wonder i wonder if that's a translation issue more than anything else but well it, it, mm. it's in both it's in both japanese and english so it's like yeah it's a, it feels like just a weird line like they want to have like a reference to something that happened in the manga and it's like yeah it's mm. just, it was a weird thing but it's just like yeah, it's a whatever at this point it doesn't matter because they've all they've it's caught up it, to it, it anyway it, so. well it's also a throwaway line that doesn't matter to yeah. anything mm-hmm. 
while we're on the tangent of like just random stuff in the movies, that's it. Um, I just want to uh, shout out to my favorite part of the movie where they ride on top of the bus and Deku. It's like Deku insists on paying bus fare, and it's like. <laughs> It's like we get it. Hey, I paid we, for two seats. We get it. We get it, Deku. You're a goody good. Yeah, it's like we're we're still riding on top of the bus, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 is, that, that, that is something I noticed in like because for the most part the Japanese and sub- subtitle and uh, English were pretty much the same. Like they they, they they had slightly different like yeah like obviously slightly different tone of dialogues, but they were the same. But I know that 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 that, that scene technically had two different jokes and different like in, in Japanese in like in the Japanese version he he shoots it and he's like oh like I paid for two tickets and, and I paid for two tickets and Brody's like so sitting on the bus is okay and Midori's like no where's in English yeah he, said, he says yeah we're, so we're still sitting on the bus yeah it's like, that, that, that was something I noticed like oh like, it's two different jokes in both things and like, but they're, they're both funny in different ways yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> Great animation when you threw those coins. I wasn't expecting the movie to uh, to have a li- to have a little uh, uh, a- anti police in it. That was, a, that was a surprise. Well, that was that was going to be something that I was going to touch on when you were talking about it, like how interesting it would have been if they delved more into like how some people feel if they are like quirkless. Like it felt fitting that some people in the police or were emphasizing that they would be quirkless. That yeah, they may have some like like something against the heroes because they, they're, they're limited to all that what they can do but the heroes can do this and that and in some ways can make and, and make the them feel inferior everything yeah so it's they like, kind of like have some resentment for them sort of like the uh, spider-man issue <laughs> it's like where it's just like it's like i'm doing your job for you guys yeah don't pay the don't, don't wear it out i don't know, I don't know. yeah <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 that's that's something Vigilantes does a little bit, but it's like yeah. Other than that, that is something you don't really see like yeah from, from the police perspective. Again, other than other, other than like uh, Sukayochi with uh, All Might, you don't really get any like actual like yeah real real police politics in the series. So, like mm-hmm. yeah, that would have been something other than just oh the 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 uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, chief is corrupt and that's about it. Because mm. on the surface, it could have felt like oh, like oh, this is how they swerve it. Like they even got the police behind them. But like, if you think about it, if they delved into like where that where that kind of roots from, then it feels like that would make sense. How they would have been involved, like some of them would be involved in with the cult. Right. In, so. Instead, the police being corrupt are just there to give Deku and Rody a roadblock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Road Rody block. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get up! Uh, <laughs> and, and, and also, uh, uh, o- o- Otheon is in America, so it's like. Oh wait, <gasps> hold on! It's in America. <laughs> I thought it was in Europe land. <laughs> My Hero Academia is real. O- 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 Otheon's clearly designed to post. It's like a cross between uh, San Francisco and Spagonia. Wait, <laughs> Sonic <laughs> Hold on a minute, Stefan. <laughs> you mean Europe? So you would make a Sonic reference. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I saw all the red panels, and I'm like, yep, they're, 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 they're Spagonia. You're going to put Sonic in the like... thumbnail, aren't you? <laughs> I'm just imagining you just having like a world tour around like Italy or France or just different parts, and you'll be like, oh, it's like Sonic Unleashed. It's wow. Like, uh, no, no, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to Mykonos and just be like, oh, it's, uh, it's Apatos. <laughs> Stefan, I did that, and it was. Is a Deku crossing the famous Shibuya crossing from Persona? Five. God damn it! Oh, oh my snap. God, yes. <laughs> Whoa! Did you know that Persona Five invented ancient Greece? I mean, God damn it, <laughs> Egypt! <laughs> you just said no spoilers. Thanks, you said Joey. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> they, they, Persona Five invented the world. Gosh darn it! Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, it, it isn't something that's mentioned, but it's like it's something like uh, the the uh, the Italian book, which uh, so which 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 was surprisingly was released. Uh, uh, they they did release like a translated version of it in America. Sadly, I didn't get it. Same here. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but like the the book the book does like because the, 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 there's a there there's a little short story that was drawn by Horikoshi of like the the kids like on like at the airport ready to go to Oceon and they're like oh yeah Oceon's in America because they're talking about how like oh he uh, Midori like Midori's nervous and they're like oh j- j- just just re- just remember uh, your your English and you'll be fine and because there, there's a part where like when in the Japanese version when he introduces uh, himself to Rodi he says Azuku Midori and not Midori Izuku so it's like oh that, that was like a small clever way to distinguish like oh he's technically speaking even though he's speaking japanese he's technically speaking english to uh roadie and like roadie speaking english so it was like it was like a little thing of being like oh yeah like technically they're like they're yeah that's very nice 
Yeah, it, 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 was, it was a little thing, but yeah, it's just kind of the fun, the, the weird, like the dissonance of like, yeah, it's it's America crossed with Europe. So it was kind of be of like, I, I need to double check like once the movie comes out on Blu-ray and I can like rewatch. I want to see where on the map the because they they list where where all the bombs are and then it's like oh like they they, they point where Oceon is and I I forgot where the Oceon like it like is on the map. So I want to see like oh figure out where exactly in America Oceon is supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna go there in real life. <laughs> See if it's well, I mean, well, I mean, all you have to do is just go go to go to San Francisco and like there you go. Wow. Go to, it's like San Francisco and then go to the uh, the uh, Dubai like giant building and it's like there you go. That's also that that weird spiral thing. I can run from the police just like Deck. <laughs> <laughs> I can do. I'll do it right now. See, be right back, guys. <laughs> no. There's sirens in the, the background. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> oh, he actually, he, oh, he, oh, he, actually he actually ran from the police. <laughs> oh, he's back. That was pretty fast. Did the police get you? <laughs> um, I'm I'm down two legs. They broke your legs? <laughs> they got That's my so eyes! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, death by cop. <laughs> One one other line, very quickly that like that that, 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 that like still like that, that like stuck in my mind is uh it, it's after uh, Todoroki and Bakko like dealt with the vil- like dealt with the villains and Endeavor's lecturing them and then Bakko's just like well sorry you didn't teach us how to ignore threats <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't be smart with me <laughs> it's like, that was, he's right that was pretty good it's a, it's always fun taking the p- anytime you can t- that they can take the piss out of Endeavor is always a good thing <laughs> absolutely. Is there, uh, is, is there any other quick little moments? Because uh, I, I have a couple, but I just want to make sure you guys get all of your like little uh, um, li- 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 little little thoughts and moments you want to get. Uh, nah, I think I think I'm good. All things considered. I, yeah, same here. I felt like the uh, I was thinking earlier with um, the enemy that Shoto was against. It's like all you had to do was just go in circles in the water. You didn't actually have to leave the water. You would have won by <laughs> drowning him. What are you doing? <laughs> How did you give him an opportunity? <laughs> but that, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Everything we yeah. touched on, I'm pretty good. Yeah, like, aside from, we already talked about Egyptian Man, right? And it's like too far. <laughs> we get it. Yeah, you yeah, like him a lot. It's like Paper Mario character. <laughs> yeah, the only other line that, like, I, like, <laughs> I, that, like, I can think of off the top of my hand is... I it's like I, it's really nothing like new for Deku, but like Deku standing right in front of the, right in front of the door, and it's, it's like he's saying like I it's like I'm the end of the line. It's like really stuck out to me for whatever reason. I I love this kid so much. <laughs> <laughs> There, oh, I I remembered because uh, they're, they're 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 like they're during the whole like them running away from Humor Eyes, and you have like the shot uh you have the shot of Flecturn staring at Rhodey, and I was so scared that they were gonna do oh Flecturn's actually his father, and I'm like no don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> I still feel the family that. connection thing was pretty forced. Yeah, it's like I, I was honestly expecting it to be Flecturn, but it, like it, 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 some sort of fam- familial uh, connection just was really a. Uh, it's like okay, we see this coming a mile away. You didn't strictly need to do it. You could have just been a. I would actually would have preferred it if already was really just a wander in or wander in. I, I did I did like the whole thing like like they had like the, like that oh like R- Rody like Rody was basically like a aban- like quote unquote abandoned by his father and then basically shunned by everyone because they're like oh god his his father's a cultist it's like oh mm. get get a, get, a, get away from all them and so it's like I like I like how the, how that like it wasn't just simply like oh the uh the, his fa- like the fa- my dad left to, to get my dad left to get the eggs and never came back <laughs> yeah they, they, they didn't just do his father died or his father left and they were just on their own it was oh everybody shunned them because of what they're Dad, what is yeah, dad in association to this and you're kind of like that was even an interesting bit in a way because it it delves in of like you know just a prejudice that you can just apply on someone when it's completely unfair society <laughs> yeah. i think it would have been more interesting if the father still like loved his kids or whatever but he also was a big supporter of the uh of the movement instead of just being forced to work for their cause mm. i feel like that would have been more interesting because to me it just seems like another kind of from Star Wars Galen Erso being forced yeah, to work no, on the I Death was, Star. <laughs> yeah, no, I was I was literally just thinking about Rogue One the entire time <laughs> yeah. regarding him. Another Star Wars reference. Uh, pff, man, I really I really like the end of Rogue One. Such a blast. <laughs> I, I, what, what, I, what I did like about like the kid, I liked about the connection is that it kind of led into like a thematic kind of arc for uh, Roddy, which is kind of the whole thing of like 
family versus the world of like oh Ro all Roddy cares about like what all what most cares about Roddy is, is his brother and sister and it's like yeah he he's willing he he's willing to just give up this case which 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 he, he has no idea about but it's it's probably bad he's willing to just give it up to the bad guys just so he can get back to uh, to his family because that all, all that matters it, all that matters to him is that and it's kind of you have the thing of like oh well, like, that uh, his father like went went to go work for Humorize to build the bombs because of the whole like oh they 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 threatened his family so it's like this thing of like oh doing something that threatens the world versus like do like have doing that in order to protect your family is like what what it, it's the question of like what is like the right thing to do and like there isn't really like a right answer like like, yeah, like obviously like Roddy is like he 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 is like justified in like being worried about his uh brother being worried about, about about his uh his brother and sister and like you have the whole thing at the end of being like oh uh, I like you where where he where they're they're like oh we 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 won't we won't uh we won't uh, de uh, detonate the bomb in Oceon if you help us and it's like the thing of like oh do you do you think he's gonna uh make the thing because again all that all that what he cares most about is their safety but in the end he chooses the world instead of instead of them then chooses to trust in Midori and all the other heroes to actually like save the day and also in himself to uh to make it in the end so you you kind of have like yeah that connection of like him him in some ways like resolving the problem that like that his that is basically his father entrusted upon him after he uh after he uh died after half after he after he died in the background it was a good character yeah. arc. i liked it a lot Oh, let me. Oh, and and there there is one there is one other thing regarding because the the other thing that about uh, humorize that probably would that what that makes them kind of more interesting in a meta sense is the whole idea like because every like every time they talk about like the quirk singularity theory and people are like oh why why why, 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 why are you believing in such a stupid theory it's like it doesn't make sense but it's like on a meta level like we as the readers know <laughs> no it uh, is definitely should, like flat like, earth <laughs> like. The, it, 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 it's one of the it's one of those things where it's like no, it's brazenly obvious to anyone who's paying attention. Yeah, like the, in uh, in in the remedial course arc when they're when they're taking care of all the preschoolers, it's like uh, present Mike is like talking with one of the Shaging kids, and they're like, "Hey, did you notice that all the all the kid all the, uh, the the preschoolers have much more powerful quirks than we did as kids?" It's like, yeah, it's kind of similar to that quirk singularity theory that the cults. Uh, the no, cults that, are can't, like, that can't be like, real. Nah, it can't be. And then you also and then you have Midoriya getting sick quirks is because of the quirk singularity. Like a one for all's exploded in so much power that now he has all the the other quirks unlocked. So it's like yeah, we and yeah because it's mentioned like with uh, uh, the the doctor he 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 created that uh, theory because he was like yeah I noticed that quirks were going crazy and all for one was the only one who believed him because all for one was like yeah I know you're right because I'm been able to see this myself. So it's like yeah as as a viewers like we know that oh yeah th this is like an actual problem and it's like it's a problem that the series is probably going to deal with at some point because I'd be surprised if it doesn't because it, yeah it is a major part of the story and like a lot of like the problems that happen with the world so it's like it's an interesting thing of like if this was a different movie that primarily focused on humorize it'd be interesting to see a thing of like oh hey like may maybe they have a point about the quirk singularity being a problem but just not like just just not genocide isn't the answer and it's like I think that like that, that would have been for a different movie but it would have been like a an interesting like direction for them to go in it's killing people mm. bad these are important <laughs> questions. New, news at nine. <laughs> Am I out of touch? <laughs> no, no, it is the heroes who are wrong. No, it's the Quirks who are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Although you know, for a group named Humorize, they weren't very humorous. Uh, I laughed once. Well, I mean the uh, <laughs> uh, the twins. The twins were fairly humorous. <laughs> they're laughing a lot. Yeah, they were <laughs> I don't think they're laughing. Time. Yeah, they're yeah, having a good time. Is there anything else to kind of go over or? <laughs> the previews. <laughs> and now a word from our sponsors. Sword Art Online, the movie. Oh, boy, yeah, were... just what we need. More Jesus Coon. Although, to be fair, this has the least amount of stuff to do with Jesus Coon, so. Yeah, although there were, like, com compared to, like, the other anime movies me and, me and the others have seen recently, like, there were a lot of previews before this one started. Oh, yeah, there oh, were. Yeah. It was weird. It's like, did, you guys, usually, did you guys also get Spider-Man? Yes. Yeah. Uh, he also got usually, an ad yeah. for crypto, and then everybody yeah. in the theater booed. <laughs> booed. <laughs> yeah, usually, usually for anime movies, it's like you'll get like one thing for like Funimation if they have something coming out. You have one thing for a random Ghibli showing, and then it just goes to the movie. It's like this was like actual yeah. mo regular movie yeah. preview length. I was like, can you please not? 
I think it's because technically this movie got a much wider release than just like the small like the, the I think yeah this this one did have like the the biggest wide release of the other two movies so I guess because they they, they kind of treated it as more than just like the, as just like a special like limited showing so that that, that might have been also a thing of like oh they're treating it like an actual movie. Yeah, mm. I don't like how it made so much money though. <laughs> As a result of a lot of things, it's like great. They're gonna get the wrong idea and think that this is the way it should go. It's like, mm. as far as like the actual tone, how the movie goes, but that's just a me thing. I know. Mm-hmm. I do think personally, because well, for there is the kind of the question of like again, we 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 made we uh we uh, made made the joke last time of like oh there was no place to put the movie, but like there there technically was because like there is there is like a two month time skip and then the, they put it in that two months. But now we've reached the point where like yeah. There is literally no place to put another movie. So, is the question of if they do make another movie, are they going to do like? I'd a rather they. F- I'd rather they have all hands on deck for season six. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, what I, I personally yeah, this is like, you know, just skip next year, just focus on season six, and then next the following year for season seven, you can make another movie and like make that movie like uh, like do something different. Like again, like where you, you they, they they kind of went halfway with this of like you have the worldwide threat, but you make it like very like you you have like a very centered small scale stories like yeah do do another like small scale like do 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 a pre like we have no idea if they're going to do this in the main series but like if they don't just like do do an actual all might prequel like do like do the little things that they did in the like in that flashback in the first movie and like expand upon it like show show more that uh, like show more (laughs) of like all might doing stuff like during the time stephanie you say that they're gonna do time travel (laughs) oh A classic All Might and Modern All Might. All, no, all, not, all Might, All, all, weak, all, weak all Might and No, we, 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 are, we already denied that. Thing. Oh, we better oh. get to the wiki stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, uh, the, the, uh, there was one kick because you you have the whole thing like within the first movie Midoriya has the mid he has the full gauntlets which lets him use 100% one for all in the second movie you have Midoriya and Bakugo both using one for all so you, you have like these kind of like those weird things to get like the characters to like full power in this movie like what I was expecting was going to happen in the ending was Midoriya gets knocked into a vat of trigger so you get to see one for all, like triggerified, and it's like that, 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 that's 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 how we get like super powered, like one for all, like that. That's how he's defeated. But instead, yeah, we just have Midori just kind of punching on his own. And I don't know if I like it better or not. Like if they had, like if they had gone full, like him being infected by trigger and just going like ape shit nuts. It's like I wonder if that would have been like better or not. Like that's that's some kind of like on the fence about like oh it would have been interesting to see, but I don't know if it would have been good. Like. Sticking the landing, yeah, I get that. And one more, and one one more quick, one more of my thoughts is the 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 uh, the a friend. Uh, I believe I believe it's because 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 uh, Asian Kung Fu Generation made two songs uh, for the movie. There's like the end credits theme and then the the middle theme. I forget the road one's trip called theme. Friends, one called Friends and one's called Empathy, and I forget which one's which. But the 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 song that plays in the middle that that, that that's just that's yeah, that it's just Midoriya and Rhodey just on their on their road trip i think i think that that that's that scene is genuinely great it's just yes. like i think the music the, the music is wonderful i just it, it's just something that you would never expect to see in a my hero like thing it's, it's very it's very slow it takes it easy it's just like it, ha- it has a lot of very beautiful like scenery visuals it does a lot of cool like like interesting like uh visual storytelling and so like it's something like that it, it's it's so different than anything in my hero that is i was approved I, I was very glad that they were able to do something like that uh in this i'm old hmm. enough to remember when asian kung fu generation was the ending was one of the ending things for fma 2003 <laughs> oh boy okay grandpa let's get you back to bed <laughs> <laughs> And uh, any other last thing? Because I, I went pretty much through most of my thoughts. Yeah. Um. Honestly, Stefan, like you, you explain your thoughts a, a lot better than I can. Like, cause I, like, I feel like I have to write mine down, and even then, I don't have the ending to do that. <laughs> you should have gotten a planner, Joey. Damn it! <laughs> thing good. I like thing. I can feel the ADHD leaving my body. <laughs> Sneak into the theater with a notepad and write down notes so you can make a parody song later. Oh, it's just like when I'm playing Persona 5. <laughs> it's just like, it's just like the majority of high It's like, I, I get some real My Hero vibes from this. Oh, You're God. just muttering to yourself. <laughs> just <laughs> sketching away. Shut up, Joey! <laughs> the, uh, the, out, the outtakes from, the outtakes from uh, Bakugo's uh, voice actor directing. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Where's that handsome devil Bakugo? <laughs> <laughs> I love Clipper Chapman. If only Bakugo were here. He's he's so much cooler and better than me. 
That was like in, in when I watched the second movie. Literally every time Bakko opened his mouth, like in the English version, anytime Bakko opened his mouth, the entire theater laughed. It's like everybody, everybody loves him. He's my mom's favorite character. I've started taking my mom through the show. Oh my oh, god, real? he loves nice. Bakugo. <laughs> she doesn't like Saro, the best character. <laughs> uh, yeah, has she seen me? Have you seen Bondo? Yeah, I was Bondo gonna say Academia. Bondo. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, good old Saro, the guy who's now completely irrelevant because Midori has black whip. <laughs> Did, 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 didn't, did, didn't, you, didn't you want to mention something about Bakugo's abs? <laughs> oh, yeah. Bakugo's abs. He has abs. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. No, that's not how you said it. You said abs. <laughs> oh, man. That Bakugo guy is so ripped. I think he even has, like, an eight pack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. I wish Bakugo would fight me. <laughs> Where's that sexy beast got Bakugo? <laughs> <laughs> Best outtakes in a long time. <laughs> well, it's not even really outtakes, but close. What enough. do you mean? It's the real show. No, my 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 favorite outtake is during the All Might and All for One fight, and All for One All for One's like making his big speech is like every every day I dr- every day I dreamed of how I would be able to crush you once and for all, and All Might's like. You dreamed of me? <laughs> <laughs> no, my favorite, okay, okay. my favorite, still, okay. my favorite, still the little bunny foo foo one from Chris. Yeah, that that one's great too. <laughs> little bunny foo foo hop. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that's that's everything uh, I've I've got. Uh, do you guys want to say say your last minute thoughts before we close this out? Yeah, just generally speaking, it's it's fine. I'm not gonna say it's a bad movie by any regards. It's just the most ho hum. It's here. It doesn't really do much for me. I sort of think Rhodey's a good character, but that's about all it has going for it, in my opinion. It's It just reminds me too much of so many other filler that doesn't really matter movies that it's like, okay, it was fine. I don't. I didn't say I wasted my time, but I see no reason to go back to this. Uh, <laughs> just to be the opposite side, I like this movie a great deal, and I really appreciated Rhodey's character arc. I thought it was really well done. It felt the most like a movie out of all the My Hero Academia movies. And if this is the last one, I'd be okay with that. It really scratched an itch for me when it came to My Hero movies. I'm in a similar vein of like, I'd be, I'm, I'd be very content if they didn't do any more movies. And that this happened to be the last one. And I thought it was, yeah, it, it, like I said in the beginning, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I had my little like things that I noticed that might have being like a nitpick for me or what have you but uh for the the, you know the exclusive character for the film and how they and how he was and the likability and how much i was fond of him and his arc and um just the general like story of what it was all about and 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 finding myself actually liking this the swerve that it was like uh like a like just a trip kind of thing um yeah, no, I, I found myself quite fond of it. And, um, yeah, no, good film, good film. Uh, I just want to say I'm looking forward to seeing more of a Egyptian dude in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I needed that until now, until I watched that movie. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, it's like I... I, I would also like to uh, do a cop-out answer and say uh, I want to see more Egyptian dudes or in the future <laughs> and uh, more Egyptian Midoriya man. taking the bus. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but like I ha- I had a lot of fun. Like honestly, like I really do. In- like even though this movie didn't really do anything for the main plot, I really do enjoy like the experience of just seeing these movies with friends and like just like being able to <laughs> it's like like experience things in real time and just I react very heavily to things. So it's like I'd like if. I like I I'm very easy to please, but like also it's it's a it's a negative, but also I I enjoy I enjoy it, I enjoy things a lot, but yeah mm. it has its problems. I still like I like I can't say whether like it's like com- like each each movie has its own benefits. I I I really I got to go rewatch all of them at some point. I, I will rewatch all of them at some point. Mm-hmm. Just hit me up, Jelly. Sounds good. Right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I might go <laughs> right after this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these messages yeah as the uh as the as the my hero academia like the as the obsessive fan of like the one who consumes pretty much everything involved like again like i've I've read through the main series and watched it so many times reading through vigilantes religiously i i i I love i love the the school briefs novels i love like just pretty much uh, every other thing so like i've i've seen so many different angles of the my hero academia world because it's just i love i love this universe and i love these characters that i just want to see more of them 
them. So it's like, I, I'm someone who's like, yeah, just, I'm all for like, just get yeah, more movies just cause like, again, like I'm a sucker for wanting to see like just more of these characters do things. And it's like, I'm really glad that like of any, like, is, is it, cause I knew I was going to like have a fun experience with it no matter what. So I was glad that this movie gave me like a different experience than just another, just, Oh, like just an onslaught of like just a fighting because again, like we have, we, I, I had, we have two movies that we uh, we have like two like we have movies like beforehand that like that satisfy that itch of just like pure fun and fighting like both in very different ways so to have this movie where the entire second act is just a very low key of Midori and Roddy just just chilling chilling on the side of the road it's it's just the fact that my hero like got the chance to do something like that i was super glad for and like i was glad that something like this existed and like yeah if, if the next movie decides to do something like again like either in the same vein or does it in like another like another it takes it in another different direction i'd be happy for it because again like it's it's just the what they can do with this world and how they can tell these stories is something i really want to see and like like in terms of like big person like personally it's like Heroes Rising is one that I'd probably go back to more just because again like I like because I, I like seeing like how they handle class A and I'm like one of the people who doesn't mind the bat shit the bat shit insanity of the ending like they, it doesn't bug me so I'd be able to go back to that more often but yeah, again in terms of an actual executed structured movie I think this one uh, this one succeeds uh, over the others just like yeah being able to tell its story and do it well and it's like if they if they, if they decide to do more movies like just yeah, doing doing the same way of like you know introducing a new character and focusing on them and maybe doing again another low scale low stakes story it's like yeah I, I would be happy for that mm. so yeah uh, I don't know <laughs> there, there isn't uh, I mean uh, uh, the season 6 isn't going to be until like the end of next year so it's going to be a while for that I feel like I'm probably going to do a Vigilantes video once Vigilantes concludes in I mean le- by the time in less season, than a few months yeah I would say by the time the next season comes out the manga might even be done <laughs> May- oh god maybe oh no <laughs> But yeah, it's like because when... I know Jujutsu Kaisen is supposed to end next year. Hero Academia is probably going to be the end of next year, maybe early 2023 when it ends. So interesting. But yeah, it's like when <laughs> probably the next time you, the next time you'll hear a My Hero thing will probably be like a Vigilantes discussion thing, and then and then eventually the season six video once that's done <laughs> so yeah but, but I'll, I'll be talking a lot more about anime and other things here and i'll probably find excuses to talk about mha and other things elsewhere so i will never st- i will never stop you can't escape it dear viewers it's what going gonna to happen do when, what are you gonna <laughs> do when you get to kaisen hero academia and then eventually one piece all end uh well i well, I, I, I have a bajillion of manga on my side I, I i am prepared i am prepared if i if one series ends i've got another one to analyze the shit over <laughs> 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 on to the next